to be more productive using the Microsoft Office products. Okay, we should be sharing the screen momentarily, and you should be seeing uh, a, uh, an Excel uh, spreadsheet of an expense report. So if anybody's having uh, difficulty with that, you can put something in the chat so we can get to uh, correct that. So, okay, here's a standard kind of uh, spreadsheet. Let's say you uh, run this company and you have expense reports that people have to submit uh, every, every month. And um, they uh, travel to different places and there are a bunch of different kind of expenses. And perhaps this area in which people place their expenses for that month or for that trip, uh, you have, feel that the, there should be nothing in there that's greater than $5,000. So if you go to, if you select that range, it could be a cell or a range, and you go to the data tab, whether you are in uh, Excel 2007, 2010, 2013, this is pretty much the same. Uh, if you go to the data tab, you will see a bunch of data tools, a group for data tools, and one of them says data validation, which has a drop down. So we're going to say data validation. And of course, by default, it allows you to put any kind of value in any cells. So any value is the default. But if you don't want any value and we want to restrict it in some way, we're going to say, okay, it could be a decimal number, and I can either say it's between these two numbers or it's greater than, less than, and so forth. So I'm going to say it has to be less than, and I'm going to put the maximum as 5,000. Whoops, not 50,000, but 5,000. Now I could say okay at this point, and that would be fine. It would work, and anybody putting in anything greater than 5,000 or greater would get a, a stop. They wouldn't be able to do it. But there are a couple of other tabs here that would further allow you to control things. So here's the input message. If you would like somebody to see when they're clicked into that cell or range, what uh, what they're supposed to do, uh, we can tell it to put in um, a, a, a title, and that's optional, and some kind of an input message. So we're going to tell it as the title, um, enter expense, and I'm just going to abbreviate. And then if you want it to have a more, uh, more of an explanation, you can tell it to um, fill in, oops, Sorry, I want that to be down in the input message. You could tell them to fill in expense must be less than 5K. So I'm just abbreviating that. And uh, if you would like an error alert, you can put in. By default, it's going to stop people from entering that data. But if instead of stopping them, you just want to give them a warning or you just want to tell them some information, uh, you can do that as well. And so uh, if you want to do that, the warning title uh, could be something like invalid data. And if you want to put the message in there, you could say must be uh, less than 5K, let's just say. And then if I say OK, now notice that information is there. If I click away from that, of course, you don't see it. But anywhere in that range, you're going to see the, uh, the text that you entered as an explanation. And because we only made it a warning, if I do put in something greater than uh, 5,000, it will give me this warning, and, but ask me if I want to continue. If I say yes, I can actually enter that. Uh, obviously, if I say no, it's going to take it out. If I put in something less than 5,000, then it simply takes it. So that's, uh, that's the deal. Now, if I had told it in the data validation, so I'm selecting the range again, going back to data and data validation, and I'm changing this to a stop instead of a warning, and now I try and enter something that's 5,000 or greater, it just tells me stop. Must be less than 5K. I can retry and put something less, and it's happy, but it won't let me enter something more. So this is the way that you can control what's being entered in here. All right, so that's uh, one. Now, another uh, very nice facet of this data validation is sometimes we have information. For instance, we want to have what department 
uh, is submitting this expenses, the person is in what department who's submitting that. And below here I've typed in a few department names to use as examples, and perhaps you don't want people to type it in the way they want, because someone might say finance, but someone else might type in accounting. Or somebody might say research instead of R&D, or tech department instead of IT. So if you'd like everything to be consistent, which makes it a lot easier to collate information, then you can tell them they have to be uh, entered from that drop-down list. So I'm going to go to this cell, which is where the department should be filled in, and I'm going to go to data validation. And in this case, in the settings, instead of any value or decimal value or a whole number value, I'm going to say list. Okay, And then I can create a list by typing it with commas in between, or if I already have the list typed somewhere, which I do, I can say, okay, I want to go down here and highlight my list. And there it is. Okay. And if I want to have some sort of input message, or I can say, uh, just that'll say department, and this one will say enter from drop down list. Okay. And if I don't want them to put anything other than those departments, I can just leave it as a stop. And when I say OK, now, of course, this anywhere else my cursor just looks like it normally does. When I click into department area, it says enter from the list, and there's my little drop down. And I can enter whatever I want from that list. If I try to enter something else, like accounting, when I try to enter it, it says, no, you can't do that. Retry or cancel, you can't do that. So that's the idea. So the list can be, in this case, it's a one cell item to drop down, to get uh, enter things from the list, but it could be a range as well, just like the expense amounts uh, were a range. Okay. Another possibility is that you might want to limit um, entry in certain uh, field certain cells or ranges as to how many characters somebody can enter. Uh, you might have employee ID numbers and their four character numbers, or um, or uh, telephone exchanges that you know, or a certain number, so that you want to limit it. So here's a location, and let's say this is a location where the travel was uh, taken, and and maybe there are too many different locations to make a list practical, but you have certain. Um, abbreviations that you like people to use. So you don't want them to type in New York City, you want them to type in NYC. Uh, you don't want them to type in Port Washington NY, you want them to type in um, uh, PW NY or something of that nature. So you can indicate what you want those, how many characters you're going to allow. <clears throat> so again, I'm going to data validation. And instead of in the settings, instead of any value, I'm going to say text length text length. And I couldn't, can again say between this and that, greater than that, less than that. I'm going to say uh, less than or equal to, and I'm saying seven is the maximum number of characters in this particular case. And when I um, want to put in a message, I can say uh, enter location of travel. Okay. And I can, you know, explain it further that it has to be seven characters or less. And I can have it be a stop or I can have it be a warning. I'll say OK. So now, again, that particular explanation only shows when I'm clicked in there. And if I do try to type in New York City, when I enter it, I get, nope, that's not valid. Uh, retry. And if I type in NYC, that works fine. So that's the same idea. If I try and type in Port Washington, for instance, doesn't like that. But if I retry it and I say PW, all good. So you can restrict uh, text amounts uh, values as well. Okay. Uh, one more item that I wanted to mention was dates. You can restrict certain cells. Uh, or ranges to dates or times. So let's say you want over here to have the date the travel begins, and you want the date in a certain format. <clears throat> we can set the format either before or after, but the basic thing here is that we want a date to be entered here. So we can say data validation, and in the settings, 
uh, instead of a number or restricting the length, we can say date. And we can indicate, well, I don't want people filling out things that where they traveled two months ago. So maybe I want it to be um, greater than, and I'm going to start it with 9115. So I want it to be current. I don't want it to be something that I want to fill in something that they did last month. And in the, uh, I'm going to say date travel begins. And then the error alert, again, I can leave it as a stop or I can give it as a warning. I'm going to leave it as a stop. And so when I'm clicked in here, I think maybe I missed something here. Let's see. Data validation. Date. Okay. Looks okay. Maybe because I didn't put the input message. Okay. Enter. Date. Travel begins. Okay, so that's where the message comes from. So if I try and enter a date, oh, I forgot to put submit my expenses for last month's travel. Doesn't like that. Can't do that. If I, uh, I'm, I'm doing it for a current, likes that just fine. And if I would like to um, format that, Um, I not format cells, and I want to format the cells for date, and maybe I want the date to be a long version date. So then, no matter what I try, when I, no matter how I type in the date, it's going to come out in that format. So if I have, if I'm taking a trip on October one, and I type it in that way, uh, when I enter it, you know, the format has been set up. So these are the major ways that you can um, restrict entry. And here, uh, there's time, text length we did an example of. Uh, we, we used a decimal number in case somebody had, you know, cents on there, but you can use whole numbers. And there's some customized way to do that, which are a little more involved. I don't want to get into that now. So that's it. And you can set input messages if you like put the message in here and then people see what they're supposed to do when you click on the cell and you can set it as either a stop that they can't enter or as a warning or just giving them some information. So that's a data validation. Now, uh, a related item that you probably noticed when I go to data validation, there's something here called uh, invalid data, circle invalid data and clear the circles. So how does that work? So I'm going to call up a different spreadsheet that'll uh, be a better example for that. And let's say I select these uh, totals across the bottom here. All right. And let's say the idea of the data validation circles is to make it very obvious uh, that there's some information, there's some data that does not meet your criteria, and so the program automatically puts a red circle around them. So it just makes things stand out that do not meet your criteria. So that's the whole idea. Okay, so we're going to go again through data and validation. And we have to tell it what's valid and what's invalid in our settings here. And we're going to say whole number that is greater than, and I'm going to put in here 1,300. And when I say OK, nothing changes right away. But if I then go to tell it to circle the invalid data, it circles all of those that are not greater than 1,300. So that's what I told it to do. This is what's invalid. So it might be helpful for, especially if you're sharing a spreadsheet with somebody and they need to see what, which things are outside the whatever standards you set up. Helpful to do that. And you can be anywhere if you want to turn off those circles. You don't have to be on that range. You can say clear the validation circles and it goes away. And by the way, any kind of clearance you want to do for your data validation, there's a clear all here. And that's the best way to clear it. Because if you're clearing just your settings, uh, for instance, where we said, uh, you know, only seven characters or less or whatever, it could still have your input message come up. So if you want to clear everything, you just use the clear all. Okay, 
So that's what the validation circles. And a kind of related function might be uh, conditional formatting. And that means that if I, if I had, let's say, this data here, well, let me just pick a couple, and I wanted to uh, have certain things stand out in a certain way, uh, this would be in the Home tab. It's not in the Data tab as the other uh, features we were talking about. And then you have conditional formatting, which allows you to say, I want to highlight in certain ways any particular items. So if I want to highlight those that are greater than 500, let's say, in that row, and you can see which ones would, by default, it uses a, re a dark red text with light red background, with, but you have all sorts of different choices and you can custom format as well. So I'll just let it do the, uh, the default. So it highlights the items that you're um, interested in seeing. Uh, and that would just be using color to highlight. But they also have uh, top and bottom kind of things. So if you want to see which items are above average or which items are in the top 10% or the lowest below average, that sort of thing. So here it shows you which ones are below average. And again, you can pick out what color or other type of formatting you like it. So those are the ones below average. So it gives you a lot of ways to highlight things that might match or not match your conditions in addition to things like data bars. And I think you can see the various colors. You can choose whatever color you want, but basically what it's doing is filling the cell to a certain percentage relative to the value. So it's kind of colorful and it's kind of neat. You can have it either solid colors or uh, kind of shaded colors, which is really pretty interesting. Uh, you have a very colorful spreadsheet. <laughs> and um, other methods of conditional formatting, wait, I want to select more stuff, that are even more dramatic uh, is they have scales, which can be two or three color scales, uh, and you can choose in the rules what color, whether you want a two or three color scale, and what color you want the high value and what mm -hmm. color you want the low value to be. So that's quite uh, dramatic. And even more so, they have icon sets. Uh, oh, they're popping up on that side so we can't see. So let me select some stuff over here. I want you to be able I want you to be able to see it as I'm doing it. Okay. And then let's go to icon sets here. So notice what it's doing with the arrows, colored arrows or black and white arrows. So high value, low value, medium value. And you can indicate with all kinds of different circles, triangles, flags which ones are high. You even have little um, little charts here that can be filled up depending upon the value, circles filled in. It's There's no end to the different kind of icons. And you can set your rules again as to uh, what, what values you want to put as the high and the low or what percentages if you want. So it's all sorts of ways that you can indicate what items meet the criteria and what items don't and um, you can clear the rules either from a selected cells that you're on or just clear the rules from the entire sheet. So therefore, you don't uh, have those conditional formatting rules on anymore. So those are a bunch of ways that you can either restrict entry or indicate uh, after entry which values meet criteria or do not. So if we have any questions, please type them in your chat. Okay. Well, I think we're uh, okay. Well, you did a good job covering everything, okay. Ronnie. <laughs> Thanks for listening, and um, and we'll we, send this. Yes, yeah, so we're going to send this video, uh, this webinar out to everybody uh, that signed up for this. Okay. So we, if you have suggestions for topics you would like to see, PowerPoint, Word, Excel, uh, please uh, send those suggestions in, and we'll see you in a month or so. Bye-bye, everyone.